one of the things that in a recent debate I heard being discussed was the origins of evil. This is something that I plan to look into in a bit more detail. So just a series of very small questions so I can understand where you, what your thoughts are. Does Satan have as much power as God? No. Okay. So does Satan work independent of God? Yes. So, um, he works independent, but there is um, a caveat to that. And the caveat to that is, yes, he works independent, but God is God is the supreme. Yeah. So God is the one who would say allow or not allow certain things to happen, if you, if that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. So 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 that's in line with what. So so here's my query on that. So looking at it from a solely from a Christian perspective, if Satan wanted to do something, uh, he would need to effectively seek permission to do that from God. God is the supreme, yeah? So to speak, so so to speak um, i'm not okay. too sure so that, that that's bang in line with, but, so, so with what speak, i heard yes. yeah, okay so to speak so but i that... think we're jumping the gun on this question uh, we, i think it. we're jumping the gun the gun in terms of this this particular these particular questions that you're raising because the, the first of all what we have to what i would like to uh, what i would um turn the tables and say if when you're mentioning satan you're mentioning god and we and you met, and you mentioned does Satan have this? Do you ask that question in the sense that you either believe that there is a Satan and there's a God, or do you ask that question in a sense of this these characters they're doing certain things, but it don't make sense and they can't be a God and a Satan? My personal opinion on this is that there is no satan so and there's the, no god the the satan of the the satan of the bible yeah uh, for me is definitely not an entity that i i agree with so the reason why i asked the question because if the satan of the bible has to effectively seek permission from the supreme being god in order to carry out whatever evil or negative thing he wants to do then god ultimately is responsible as per the biblical text for carrying out these evil things okay i understand what you're saying um i'll go ahead and so, so 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 would I'm just trying to understand from the from a Christian point of view, how is that possible that God, if if Satan is not independent and doesn't have the power to do things of his own accord and, and he has to seek permission from God to do these things, then surely the one who's accountable is God, as Satan's just carrying out what God wants him to do. Hmm. Th that's um that's um what should i say um one of the likely ways that people would look at it however um that's looking at a coin just on one side um and so there are when you when as I said when you when we read any document or pertaining to the Bible there is, um, you know they, they, you you can extrapolate one thing and somebody can extrapolate another from it, but we have to ask the question and we have to look could there be another plausible reason and I will just simply say this, um, the very fact that Satan um, would have 
would, as you've mentioned, seems to have to ask permission from God, doesn't mean to say that God is um, um, responsible for of that act. What we're basically seeing here is, and it goes, and and we, and we we understand this when we look at the bigger picture. The very fact that God made this universe, this world and humans and angels and mankind, he made them with choice. And he, and he gave Satan choice to either follow or not follow and Satan rebelled and etc. And he turned to mankind to rebel mankind away from God. And so God stipulated that he kicked him out of heaven and he, and Satan has now become the God of this world. <clears throat> Meaning, the reason why it says that is because mankind was supposed to be the manager of this world, not Satan. And because when God said to Satan, and when God said to mankind, if you follow me, don't, if you follow me, everything, in, in, you know, just tying it up in this, explaining it in this way. God is simply saying in the scripture, follow me, live, live life forever in, 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 in forever in happiness and etc. Don't follow me. You would die and you enter into sin and this world will be, this, um, this world will be corrupted, etc. Satan will now be your master, not me. Okay, so he made this world for man to follow him. But if man doesn't follow him, Satan who's rebelled, he's coming to tempt mankind. God is saying, if you follow me, I'll be your God and you live forever. If you don't follow me and you follow him, he will now be your ruler. He will be your master. He will be your God because you've now listened to him. Do you understand? And so mankind followed Satan and Satan becomes, uh, mankind was enslaved to Satan and Satan is their master, God, etc. so to speak, small g, God, um, to a certain extent. However, God gave, so God simply saying, okay then, mankind, you've chose to follow saints, mm -hmm. you've chose to go your own way, you now have to reap what you sow. And, say, and God is saying, Satan, okay, you know, because the battle, the controversy is with Satan is that um, God is not fair and he is not he's not a just god and etc satan is accusing god of this and so the very fact that god has given man the, the free will god is all that he does is showing to be fair and satan is finding every way to show that god is not fair so god has given man choice man man rebelled against it man has to now reap that is fair man has to reap what they sow um and and so Man followed what Satan did. S Satan naturally becomes their leader, and that's fair in the in the way how life works. And then, as so as Satan is the ruler or God, so to speak, as the Bible has put it, small g. Okay, um, there is a limitations of what Satan can do. And God has put those limitations and he gave an example such as in Job and etc. So because the reason why God, <coughs> this is happening like this, <coughs> is because um, Satan, the, the, what's happened is Satan has now been the control of them, okay? He can, he's free to tempt and, and do certain things to a certain degree, do you understand? And God, in his wisdom, um, for example, in the, in the counter of Job, using that as an example, he came and says, oh, if he is righteous, oh, if I did this to him, he will curse you to your name, basically. And, and God is saying, OK, then I, he knows God knows the future from the end. He says, OK, then go. Try, but don't touch his, don't kill him or don't do this and etc." Now, the very fact that God said to Job, um, you said to Satan, you can go and do that. God didn't give, God didn't tell Satan to go and do it. Satan says he wants to do it. And God says he allows it. And the reason why he allows it is because Satan wants to do it. And the, the, the controversy is, is the fact of 
he has a free will. Satan has a free will to go and create anarchy, basically. And God is a, and, and God is simply giving him that free will that he even created him to do because he's showing him what you reap is what you sow. So he's giving him that free will to do what he wants. And God is saying, okay, to a certain degree. But if you do, if you go to do this, I won't allow you. And there's reasons why God is saying he won't allow him to kill or to do this or to do that to certain people, to do this to various people. The point is, the point is, um, it is not God is doing it, but it's Satan through God allowing Satan's free will, which he has created him to have to do. So. If God was to step in and to say to every time Satan wanted to do something wrong and God was to step in and says, no, you can't do this, can't do that. He would also need to do that to us as human beings. And if God did that to Satan and he did that to us, we are then nothing but robots. We do not have free will, free choice. And God will naturally be deemed as a control freak, control God, a tyrant who doesn't do give his created beings free will. They cannot do anything. God's the minute you seem to put a cigarette or, or swear, God seals up your mouth, everything, no free will. And all what God is doing is saying to Satan, you've got your free will. That's what you want to do. OK, but there's certain things that God sees beyond due to his foreseeable knowledge and wisdom and etc. He says, no, there's certain things I won't allow you to do pertaining to different circumstances and people and situations. So it's not God doing it. But you mentioned that the God of the Bible, you know, if he done that could be seen as a tyrant. Mm -hmm. But if we look at the Old Testament in particular. I see the biblical Old Testament God as a completely different biblical New Testament God. And I see that simply because of, I think, down to authorship, not because it's the same God. I think it's, it, I think it's because of the man-made construct of God, we can see that the God of the Old Testament is a different God of the New Testament. People say God doesn't change. We can clearly see that God does change. We okay. can see that God, hold on, we can see that God yeah. changes his mind. We can see that uh, the God of the Old Testament that was wiping out armies and wiping out people. And, you know, he, he, was, a, he was a very different character to the New Testament God, which shows me one of two things. Either God does change, which completely defeats the object of God being all powerful with the supreme being. Or it shows me that the authors, when they constructed this God figure, they constructed him through human eyes. Therefore, you have a change in the personality of God. Okay, um, that one is going to into, I would answer that question. But however, that is kind of changing the, the, the question a bit pertaining to is, is God, how is God feared to the point of him allowing Satan to do these things? Isn't it not God who is, who is then responsible for Satan doing his, these, these evil or these wrongs? And as I've just explained to you and I've shown you the other side of it, and I, as that explanation shows you that God is not responsible because that is even how we as human beings operate. We as human beings, when we have children or the government has people living in this country, not, not, not um, and I'll, I'll, I would base the, the pointers on the government and us as parents. We as parents, we, we teach our children right from wrong. But at the end of the day, we have, we have, we are saying to our children, you have free will. If don't go and kill. And, and, and so even God is not like that. God is not going to in that because of the way we think and et cetera. He allows us a free will. And this is the way morality with how we live in this world. So just to cover that one point, if that doesn't make sense, I think we should tackle that still. However, if you want to move, we can move on. 
but that is even how we live as human beings and we recognize that is morality that is good morality and that's what the bible is saying so moving on to the point of satan um where you asked god is the same god he's not the same god and etc this is the thing it goes back to how we are looking at the scriptures when we come to the scriptures how were we approaching it what what preconceived ideas do we come with because it's if we come with preconceived idea if we're looking at it one-sided if we're not looking at the right way we are going to walk away with the wrong idea and so when we look at the scriptures and it says and we see oh god in the old test in the new old testament it shows a god of wrath and blah 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 and vengeance and da 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 and in the new testament we're seeing a different god no on the contrary we're not the only reason why we see that because Jesus come, Jesus Christ turns up on the scenes and the most majority of Jesus life is, is around doing good and healing people and etc. Do you understand? So the, the chunk of the, the, the New Testament of Jesus life and what the disciples are preaching about is the lifestyle of Jesus Christ, the good lifestyle. However, when you get to Revelation, the same Revelation, Jesus Christ steps in into the visions of John on um, Revelation and he tells them, this is all what God is going to do to the beast, the whore and the Babylon. And he's going to burn them with fire and brimstone and they're going to perish. And so what we have in the Old Testament, we have a God, the same God of love, but the same God of um, vengeance and punishment and destruction to the Satan and to the wicked. But this is being told, it's been broken up. Unfortunately, un, not unfortunately, different to the Old Testament, the Old Testament is written because God is dealing with a people who were called to do a particular work or task or mission and as these people were on this task it involved fighting it involved etc 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 okay and there was a reason for that and re one of the reasons is because the old testament is a shadow of what the New Testament is. What they did in the Old Testament is a shadow. The New Testament is the, is the, re, is the representation, the, 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 the living. The Old Testament is simply the shadow. And so where you see them destroying nations around them, God is showing to, to, to people we have to destroy the wicked around them in the spiritual sense. The Old Testament was the literal, so to speak. The New Testament is the spiritual sense. And what we need to do with evil and sin, we need to get rid of it out of our lives, etc. And so it's not this, the, the, a different God. It's the same God, but he is doing a different, he's doing a particular work um, in the Old Testament. That's why we may see it is different God, but this is the same God.